Good morning, gentlemen. My name is Jim. Uh, I'm from Cummins and Power. We provided the emergency generator for this project. Uh, what we're going to cover today is operation and maintenance, so you guys know how this thing operates, what to look for, um, how to reset it, faults, things like that. So uh, usually where I like to start, if you come right, start right at the control panel. When you're coming out here to start your checks, the first thing you're going to want to do is disable the machine from starting on you. So normal position is auto, automatic position, which means it'll start from either the fire pump or the transfer switch. So what you're going to do is go to the O or off position. If you notice, we're getting a flashing, not an auto. Our screen woke up. So now the machine is disabled. It won't start on you while you're in here poking around. Um, then at that point, you can just start with some visual checks. We'll just start. Extra sound baffling in here. So you kind of got one side over there that's a little harder to access. Um, they, they have that little extension on there. But basically, uh, as far as your coolant level, you don't need to check that every week. You guys have generators now, correct? You have them on a usual schedule. What do you check them once a month, once a year, once a week? week. Once a week, so someone goes around weekly. and Okay. You've got a low coolant level switch on this. It'll give you an indication. So you don't really need to try and climb up there and check the coolant level every week, but maybe once every couple months, get up there and pull the cap. Basically, what you're going to look at is just to make sure that there's no oil in the coolant or anything weird like that. If the level drops, it's going to give you an indication and still have plenty of coolant in there to, to operate the machine, but it just gives you, a, gives you a warning. So any loose debris that works its way into the housing will end up here because the airflow is across the engine and out the front. So you want to make sure that your, your grill is clear. Uh, you want to look at all your little sections of hose, make sure you don't see any, any leaks, uh, any cracks or anything like that. Um, this is a natural gas generator. It does have spark plug wires. I, I don't know if rodents or squirrels or anything are a problem here, but they like to chew on the silicone wire for some reason. I don't know why. So you guys might want to, always want to make sure you check the spark plug wires. We found them where there's just nothing but the carbon core left. It's something about the material they like. So it's a nice warm environment in here. They move in, they decide to set up a condo or whatever. So um, whenever they're outside, and I know you got trees and stuff around, so they may end up finding their way in here. Who knows? Uh, oil fill. Here's your dipstick is right here. You just twist it to loosen it, pull it out. It's just a little rubber bushing on the end of it. Okay. Your, um, your gas line coming in, it's high pressure, five pounds I believe, I think is what the primary is here, and then coming out and up into here, it's probably somewhere between a half and a pound, half a pound to a pound, so it's low pressure coming into here. There's really not much you need to worry about other than just where to shut it off in case you have to. You do want to make sure that that vent stays clear, okay, that's an area you want to make sure that the screen stays in there. Um, it's not uncommon to have bees or wasps if they get inside there to block that baby off and then it doesn't work. So it's just something you want to keep a look at. This is unique in the fact that it has two circuit breakers on it. This, uh, this left one is for your transfer switch downstairs, the automatic transfer switch, which we'll see in a little bit. This one is for the fire pump, feeds the transfer switch for the fire pump. So obviously they're going to both always be on, but in case you do need to isolate them, isolate them for some reason. Kind of snug in here. <laughs> anyway, uh -oh. there's your starting batteries. Kind of, kind of tight in there. I realize that, and that's because of this air discharge uh, to try and silence the thing down a little bit. You've also got your coolant heater. That's the the device with the round red cap on the end of it. And that's maintaining our engine at uh, 120 degrees, something like that. The the upper hose, the outlet hose on that. Um, you can see that right here. Can you get that? Excuse me. It's a common failure point right here. So you want to make sure that that hose is always tight, soft and pliable. Uh, battery water level, you're, you got a battery charger stuck way back in there too. The engine control itself will give you a low battery voltage indication, so it's probably going to pick up before that charger will anyway. Um, but just so you, just so you kind of know that that charger's stuck back in there too. Water in the batteries maybe once a month, once every couple months. Uh, if it's hot out, they might use water a little more. You just don't you don't want to fill the battery level up all the way. 
the charger will cause it to push out a little water and acid and you do have a set of motorized louvers on the front on the outlet of this at the same as the intake so when you run it you're going to want to make sure you can see through here and just see them open you kind of hear it because your airflow won't come out the front so came back to our control here we talked about the operator switch we'll get back to that in a second um up on the upper left here is our digital display uh, this double left arrow button is what we call like a home button. Um, so when you push that, it always brings you back to our home screen. So if you're in messing around, you forget where you're at, that button always takes you back to this screen, okay? It's really easy to navigate if, if I want to look at engine information. Well, that's pretty obvious. I'm going to go to the engine button, push the engine button, and that's where all my engine information comes up. So my coolant temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature, stuff like that, okay? If I want to go uh, and I want to look at alternator or AC output information, I go to alternator. And that's where I'm going to get my line voltage, line to line, line to neutral, amperage, frequency, kilowatts, stuff like that. Now, if you notice, I can go backwards and forwards using these two buttons. And I can, of course, hit the double left arrow and go all the way back to the home screen. Okay? There's an adjust. You can do a fine adjustment on voltage and frequency. You should never. If all of a sudden you see something's changed, there's probably something wrong. It's, it's pretty much constant. You should always maintain the same voltage, same frequency. Um, faults, that's where it brings you up uh, some fault information. You know, low coolant temperature, fail to start. You know, any alarms that come up are going to go into a history there. Uh, what you'll see, the current doesn't have an arrow next to it right now, so there are no current active faults okay what I'm going to do is create one I just created a fault, shutdown fault emergency stop basically tells me that in case you didn't know <laughs> so now when you go back in the, now you notice current has a an arrow next to it so when I go into current it's telling me what the current alarm is so if for some reason you had an alarm and somebody came in here and pushed a button and you didn't know what was active you could get back in there and find out what, what it was so in order to clear this fault just pulling the emergency stop doesn't do it. If you notice, it's still telling me it's shut down. You need to make sure you're in the stop position. So if I was in auto and I had this fault condition, I'd need to go to off and then use the fault acknowledge reset button. You notice it went away. Our current went away. So now it's, now it's in the history. History, uh, there's another screen here called history, or another button called history. We were in faults. Uh, history has your stuff like your engine hours, things like that, okay? This button just takes you back one screen, not back to the home screen, too. I don't know if you guys caught that. Uh, there's some software model information, software information. That's pretty much for our technicians, you know. Yeah, you'll get some. I think they have manuals they'll turn over to you, too, so. Um, on the right side, the right here, there's a row of little little indicator lights running is pretty obvious the sound gives that one away <laughs> uh, remote start means it's getting a signal from inside to run so one of the transfer switches is telling it to run not an auto we talked about and there's just some common alarms brought out here um, you know low oil pressure warning stuff like that you've got an alarm panel inside that also tells you that plus the screen here will also tell you what's going on um, set down and warning lights we kind of covered those. A warning would be low engine temperature or low coolant level might be a warning where it says you got a problem, but I, I can still operate. You need to just come give me some attention. So um, we talked about the fault acknowledged. There's a lamp test here. Push and hold it down. It cycles through and tests all the LEDs to make sure that they're all functioning. Uh, then we get to our manual run stop. We'll talk about that in a second here. Across the bottom here, we just kind of have a little bar graph representation of um, stuff like amperage, KW, power factor, frequency, and voltage. It's just a green is good, red is bad kind of thing. So if it's running along and the, and the voltage is, is at 100%, you're going to see green all the way up here. And you'll see that when we run that in a second. You know, so same with like KW, it's 0 to 100%. If it's anywhere in that range, it's going to be green is good. So. Um, in order to manually run it, you go to the manual position on your operator switch and you just push the manual run stop button. 
to sit my dog. You notice the louvers are opening up? Get a shot of the louvers opened up. To stop it, you can either push the manual run stop, you can flip it right back to auto. I mean, obviously, if you're done, you want to put it back in automatic to go back, you know, okay. off and so do something. Flip the auto, it'll shut it off. As long as it doesn't have a remote start, yeah, it'll, it'll shut right off, so.